Hey, it's Jim, and I want to take a look at Olive 0.2 Alpha release again today. Now, I made this video back in October 2020, and it was really buggy at the time, so Olive was crashing a lot, but they've made a lot of updates since then, so I want to take another look. So I'm over here at the Olive Editor, sorry, olivevideoeditor.org website, and I'm going to come and click on Get Olive, and then here you can see that they have the 0.1 release, so this is what we currently have on our computer. So if I open up Olive that's currently installed, that's the 0.1 release, it looks like this. Now I'm gonna close out of this because I wanna get the 0.2 nightly build down here. So I'm gonna click on Linux because we're on a Linux computer. And this will open up this page where the download's starting. And then you can see that it's over here downloading. And if I come over to my downloads folder, let me open up folders, go to downloads. You can see that we have this app image over here downloading. So we'll give that one second here to, to get going. Okay, so that download this as a zip archive. So I'm going to right click on that and just extract it here. And that opens up this folder here. And you can see we have this app image. Now I have to make this executable so I can run it on my computer. So I'm just going to flip over to my terminal. It's the easiest way to do it. And I'm going to CD into my downloads folder. And then there's this other folder here. So I'm going to go inside of that. If I list the files in here, I might have to make this a little smaller so you can see it. Well, anyways, you can see this app image file here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to chmod add the executable to my user and add it to that app image file like that. And then if I just do a dot slash and I run that file, it will start up the all of 0.2 application. So that started up pretty fast. I didn't speed that up at all on my end. So this is all of 0.2. You can see the splash screen thanking the Patreons. And I'm just going to look at the screen here as it is. So uh, the windows are arranged a little differently than my previous uh, project. So you can actually grab these and move them around. So for instance, I might want more space down here for my timeline. So I can grab this project browser here and I can move this up. I can move it to the left or I could actually add it to this big panel up here. That's what I'll do because then I can kind of hide it behind some of these other uh, windows. And then, you know, we have our tools in our left-hand side. We want that to be as small as possible. So we'll move that over. We'll have some audio dialogue over here on the right-hand side and then our timeline will be here. And this is where we'll see our actual uh, video that playback. So. This looks pretty good to me. What you can do is you can come up to here if you like how you have this set up, you can go to window and you can say lock panels and that gets rid of the little expanding uh, and closing out icon. So these just get locked how they are. You can still resize the windows like this to make space, but no longer can you grab the tools and drag them up and it gets rid of the labels too, which gives you a little more space for your real estate, which is kind of nice. Uh, so I, I like that. Of course, you can also come up here and you could add additional panels if you want to look at some other panels that aren't uh, enabled by default. So, okay. So the next thing I wanna do is I wanna to go to my project tab up here at the top and I'm going to switch to this panel here. So I like the little little box panel. I'll, I can show you the difference here when I add a clip, but I'm gonna right click and say import and then I'm going to go to my downloads because I have a video in here. So downloads folder and then I'll just grab this MKV file and I'll add it. So you can see that this is kind of like a grid view. This would be more of a list view and this is like a smaller uh, list view with some additional information. So I'm just gonna grab this grid view like this, I like that. And then I'm gonna grab this and I'm going to drag it down onto my timeline here. So now it says that there's no sequence available here. Do you wanna create one? So yes, I'm going to automatically detect the parameters uh, from the footage and create the sequence that way. So I'll press that option there and you can see that it loads this video. So now we have a couple of different things going on. We have our playback up here in the right hand corner. We have our timeline with our video track on the top, our audio track on the bottom. And then we have track names down here for our actual video and audio tracks. So that's something that we didn't have previously. So I could say, you know, this is my screen recording or screen grab. And this is voiceover or whatever it is. And you can name these things um, and that makes it a little easier. Uh, you can also, you know, you could add additional tracks by just like moving these. So, you know, this could be a new track here and then you could add new audio track on this top one here. Uh, you can even punch in a recording if you want. So you could grab your record tool and you could do something like this and you could press play. So you need to save your project before you can record it. So I can come up here and do a save as and I'll just go into my downloads because I'm going to remove all this and I'll just call this test and it's going to be a dot OVE or all of projects. So I'll do test and then I can punch in recording like this. I could do a dub over and then I can press play. Having this issue in like VS Code when I try to dub. use the okay, and so now file browser, dub. none of the font. You can see that this issue in VS Code when I try to use the file browser. And let me just make sure that my OBS is recording our desktop audio. So I 
think it is. Okay. So oh. you're hearing that that playback? It happened. Having this issue in VS Codium when well, I try to use the file dub. browser. No. Okay. So you get that. Um, I'm going to move this and I'm just going to clean up these tracks here that I don't need. I'm going to delete all the empty tracks. Say okay. That's fine. Okay. Uh, another thing that's pretty new in the new version of Olive is that, uh, you know, we have this node based editor. So we have these tracks selected right now. So you can see that these are showing just the selected tracks in the node editor. If I unselect that, you can see the whole uh, node editor for the whole project here. And basically, you know, this is a way you can set up different effects and uh, really customize how things are actually going into uh, your audio output. So you could add effects in the sequence. If you're like me and you're not too familiar with node editors at this point, you can still go up and edit with your parameter editor. So this was missing in previous versions um, of 0 0.2 when I tested uh, before, and this is something that's you know really necessary for my workflow. So coming in here and being able to add effects to these things. So like clicking on your track, and then you have you know a transform effect for your video node. Um, you have your audio effects in here. You could actually come in and you could add additional effects if you wanted to do something like that. Um, so you can add, yeah, filters. You could add like a blur effect. So now you have your video node has a blur and a transform effect. And then you can actually map what this looks like. So you can see that's blurred here. Um, you can change the radius and do all sorts of crazy things here. Um, make this, let's see if I can make it smaller. It's a little, oh, there we go. Um, make it three or something like that. Um, yeah, anyways, you can go through there and you can change those things. You can also keyframe them in. So, um, so for instance, you know, right now I disable it. So this is the unblurred version, although my screen recording is a little blurry, so maybe it looks blurry anyways, but this is the unblurred version like this, and then you can blur it like this. So you could do something, you know, like keyframing that information in there. Um, so I could go to my keyframe panel and say at this point, I want it to be unblurred, um, but maybe... Uh, a later point in my timeline. Let me come over here and let me add a new point here and you'll say it's blurred at this point. So you could come here and you could watch that sequence. So I'm gonna click back and press play. Let's see if we can get that to go. None of the fonts show up. So let me show you what I'm talking about. If I come up here and I go to file, so do you see how that blurred? So we started back here where it's clear, clearer. And then this issue in VS Codium, when I try to use the file browser, none of the fonts show up. So let me show you what I'm talking about. If I come up here so and I go to file because, and I go to open uh, folder. We have that actual keyframed in there. So, I mean, you're probably pretty, pretty familiar with keyframes at this point. That's how, how I'd use that. But essentially, if you come up here with your note editor, you can also notice that these things have changed um, up here as well, I believe. So we have our screen grab. It's enabled, we have an output, we have a math. Now I would have thought that the blur would have come in here somewhere on this. So I can control and scroll. Okay, yeah, there you go. So I control and scroll to zoom out a little bit. You can see this blur effect is now put in here under this transform. So you can come and you can actually start editing this stuff through this panel if you're comfortable with it. And you could change this. So it went input into the blur and then went over here to the output. You could add other effects in here as well if you wanted to. So you could come here and right click and you could go to add. And let's see what else we have. So we have crop, transform. Do we have a, a rotate of some sort? I'm not sure that if that would be under, let's see, shadows, output. Well, for now, let's just go to our crop. That might be the easiest thing to demonstrate. Let's drop a crop in here. And so that dropped right in the sequence there. And with our crop, so now our, our crop is highlighted because I have it clicked on. You could actually come in here and you should be able to adjust it by clicking on the actual screen. So you can see that's cropping the video output like that. So now that whole thing is, is cropped because we have that uh, Podium. When I try to use the file in. browser, no. again, you can come back to your parameter editor and you should be able to see that that has been added to. So if I scroll over on this, under transform, we have blur and we also have our crop. So I could come in here, you know, you could remove this as well if you wanted to. So um, we have crop. Well, I would think you'd be able to right click and remove it, but I'm not sure uh, exactly how you'd go about doing that. So 
Yeah, so that's basically how you can do some of that stuff. One of the things I think is uh, a big improvement here is the text tool. So if we come and we add some text here, let's add a title and you can draw a title in like this. And then if we were come over here to a place where our title is actually on the screen, you can see that the sample text is here. And now, uh, previously you'd come in and you'd edit this pretty much, um, you know, you'd highlight this like this and then you'd edit it through your text tool over here for the most part. Now you can edit it right on the screen a lot easier. So we get this little pop-up panel where we can pick different fonts. So let's pick Anton, for instance, and let's come over here and change. This is new text. And that didn't save. Let's see if we can get that to, okay. Not sure how to actually get that to, Oh, maybe you have to have your text highlighted. That's interesting. Okay, so now you can see that the font updating. So I had to have the, the text highlighted there to actually change that. So it changed this in, this font in the middle here to Anton. Um, the rest is Deja Vu Sans. Um, and yeah, essentially you could come and you could actually uh, adjust this on your screen as well with uh, not just the text, but the positioning. So I can click out of that text dialog and I could change the size of this dialog box and then I could grab this and I can move it around to different places on my screen. I also could come and the, uh, the shapes are, are better as well. So if I come here and I do something like a solid, I could draw in a solid shape here and let me just scroll up on my screen so you can see what's going on. So if I highlight this, um, we have the solid shape. If I come over this point on the timeline, you can see this big shape here. Um, and so I could come and I should be able to resize this. We can change the color here. And it might be because of our cropping that our sizing looks a little strange. But again, this is something you probably could come in here with your note editor and change the sizing on it as well. So we have solid output. We could come in here and I think you're supposed to be able to um, change your sizes without having to add a crop filter, but um, let me see here, parameter editor. I'm surprised there's not more options, maybe not. Um, so if I could come and right click, I could add distort crop and I'm going to add it in the middle again. Um, and then I'll come over to my editor and I will crop this down like this. Okay, so yeah. So you can crop this. Um, you could use this for things like blurring out passwords, that kind of thing. So you could come here and easily lay this over text. You can move it around and say we want to just blur out that text there. You could do something like that and it works pretty well. Okay. So yeah, so that's kind of an intro to how things are working with the new Olive. Also, the videos export pretty quick now. So if I come here and I go to export options and I export media, and I can save this to a different location on my um, desktop. So I'll keep it in the downloads. I think that's fine. And I'll just call this new export, new exp, and I'll say saved. And then I'll keep the high quality. Um, and then I'll come here and I'll leave it at uh, 920 by 8 uh, by 1080. Um, and then I'll just come down here to the bottom and I can press export. And you can see that it actually gives an elapsed time and remaining time. So last time I did this, it's, it took a couple of seconds to kind of analyze before it started up. But once it started up, it was pretty accurate with the remaining time. Um, and it only took, you know, a minute or two to export a clip that was about a minute long. So it was pretty quick. I think it's probably faster than it was uh, exporting with previous versions, but I didn't do any benchmarking to actually test that out. Give that a second. probably because there's more effects drawn in here too. So the last time I did it, it was just a straight video. Um, so adding all, all different processing in there, I'm sure slows down this time as well. Well, I'm not gonna make you wait for that. So that's basically just a quick intro into the Olive 0.2 editor. There's a lot of cool stuff to play around with. It seems like it's getting a lot more stable. I haven't had it crash on me yet. Uh, so I'm really excited with the progress that's happening here. It's a really great program. Um, it, it's becoming the default video editor that, that we're using over here for free and open source stuff. So I think this is a great project. Um, definitely uh, take a look at this if you're interested in a, a good open source uh, video editor. All right, thanks for watching. We'll see you later.